Are there no card downs? Just only no card huh? What, what happened to all the card downs? The place for doing that just then, just to catch it here and look for it. <laughs> <laughs> it just simply. <laughs> just clap the plate. Sarva, bro. What are you Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dayakara Mohore Toma Bina Tedayalu Jagata Samsahari Patita Pavana Hetu Tabatahara Mosa Mopatita Prabhu Napae Beahara Aha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suki Kripa Bolo Kanakoro Ami Bara Duki Dhaya Koro Sita Pati Adwaita Gasai Taba Kripa Bole Pai Chaitanya Nitai Aha Swarup Sanatan Rupa Raguna Vata Yoga Shri Jiva Prabhu Loka Nath Daya Koro Shri Acharya Prabhu Shri Nivas Ram 
ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಸಂಗಮಗೆ ನರಥ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ದಯ ಕಾರ ಮೋರೆ ಥೋಮಾಭಿನೇ ದಯಲು ಜಗತ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿ ಬರಜಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿ ಬರಜಾರಿ ಯಶೋರ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋರ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ ಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text Number 41. 
Atavishveshavishvatman Vishwamurti Swakeshume Sneha Pashami Mam Chindi Dridam Pandushu Vrishnishu Atavish Vesha Vishvatman Vishwamurti Swakeshume Sneha Pashami Mam Chindi Dridam Pandushu Vrishnishu Atavish Vesha Vishvatman Vishwamurti Swakeshume Sneha Pashami Mam Chindi Dridam Pandushu Vrishnishu Ata, therefore, Vishwa Isha, O Lord of the Universe, Vishwa Atman, O Soul of the Universe, Vishwa Murti, O Personality of the Universal Form, Swakeshu, unto my own kinsman, me, my, Sneha Pasham, tie of affection, Imam, this, Chindi, cut off, Dridham, deep, Pandushu, for the Pandavas, Vrishnishu, for the Vrishnis also. Translation O Lord of the Universe, Soul of the Universe, O Personality of the Form of the Universe, please therefore sever my tie of affection for my kinsmen, the Pandavas and the Vrishnis. Purport by Srila Prabhupada A pure devotee of the Lord is ashamed to ask anything in self-interest from the Lord. But the householders are sometimes obliged to ask favors from the Lord, being bound by the tie of family affection. Shrima, Srimati Kunti Devi was conscious of this fact and therefore she prayed to the Lord to cut off the affectionate tie for her own kinsmen, the Pandavas and the Vrishnis. The Pandavas are her own sons and the Vrishnis are the members of her paternal family. Krishna was equally related to both families. Both the families required the Lord's help because both were dependent devotees of the Lord. Srimati Kunti Devi wished Sri Krishna 
to remain with her sons, the Pandavas, but by his doing so, her paternal house would be bereft of the benefit. All these partialities troubled the mind of Kunti, and therefore she desired to cut off the affectionate tie. A pure devotee cuts off the limited ties of affection for his family and widens his activities of devotional service for all forgotten souls. The typical example is the band of six Goswamis who followed the path of Lord Chaitanya. All of them belonged to the most enlightened and cultured rich families of the higher castes. But for the benefit of the mass of population, they left their comfortable homes and became mendicants. To cut off family affection means to broaden the field of activities. Without doing this, no one can be qualified as a brahmana, a king, a public leader, or a devotee of the Lord. The personality of Godhead is an ideal king. Showed this by example, Sri Ramachandra cut off the ties of affection for his beloved wife to manifest the qualities of an ideal king. Such personalities as a brahmana, a devotee, a king or a public leader must be very broad-minded in discharging their respective duties. Srimati Kunti Devi was conscious of this fact and being weak she prayed to be free from such bondage of family affection. The Lord is addressed as the Lord of the universe or the Lord of the universal mind indicating his all-powerful <coughs> ability to cut the hard knot of family affection. Therefore, it is sometimes experienced that the Lord, out of his special affinity towards a weak devotee, breaks the family affection by force of circumstances arranged by his all-powerful energy. By doing so, he causes the devotee to become completely dependent on him and thus clears the path for his going back to Godhead. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasate Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Nitai Priya is giving ta ta gifan e nabian Huh? Nigitafani Nigitafani Hare Govindana <laughs> 
Okay, translation again. O Lord of the universe, soul of the universe, O personality of the form of the universe, please therefore sever my tie of affection for my kinsmen, the Pandavas and the Vrishnis. Queen Kunti is offering her prayers to Lord Krishna. And she wants Lord Krishna to cut or to take to remove the attachment which she has to her family. And she speaks about two sides of the attachment. On one side she has her own sons, the Pandavas, the children from her husband. And on the other side, she has her, her father's family members. Her father's family members are the Vrishnis. So this is a problem in family life. You get the extended self, you know. The self, we're attached to the material body, it's our own self, and then we're, we're attached also to the extended self, the greater self, which is in the form of relatives. Here it's the in-laws, the Vrishnis, they're like the in-laws, you know, the, the, from, her, from her father's side, the family members. And the Pandavas are from her husband's side. So family life, of course, is very complex. You have affection. We, we have attachment for our family members. And Queen Kunti says, Please sever, my, cut my tie of affection. Take it away. Because... <laughs> this affection for the family members keeps us in the bondage of the material life. We have to develop some detachment from the body, detachment from material relationships. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to teach us devotional service, right? We are practicing bhakti yoga and by practice of bhakti yoga two things should naturally follow. Where there is bhakti, where there is genuine devotion, there will follow also knowledge, transcendental knowledge, and also vairagya, detachment from the material side of life. Detachment, vairagya. We have to go away from, we have to, we have to give up that affection, the feelings which we have for the family and for the things in relation to the body. Why? Because they are very temporary. Just like you travel on the bus. When you sit in the bus, then people come and they get on the bus with you and you're traveling in the bus together, but then the bus reaches its destination and you get off the bus and you never see the people again. They were with you on the bus, but then you get off the bus, you know. They're, they're just, it's a temporary relationship. In the same way, the family members, both the mother and the father, and all their family members, these relationships are very temporary. 
We want to see everyone as a family member, not just in terms of the body. Oh, my brother, my sister, my mother. Like we, we want to see all living entities as our family members. So that is the, the bigger vision. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us the bigger vision to see the, to see all living entities as family members, not to just think in terms of our own family. We think in terms of our own family and that may be our own country, oh Malaysia, right? Oh, Philippines, <laughs> we are thinking in terms of the body, this attachment is there and it's very strong, very deep because you grow up together. Of course, we have a debt to the family members. We have to admit, we have to recognize we have some debt to the family member. But that doesn't mean you have to give your whole life to take care of them. If you want to repay the debt to the family members, what we should do is surrender to Krishna and give our, whole, give our life to Krishna. That, that will be the greatest benefit for the family member because then the family members will think, Oh, what happened to our brother or what happened to our sister? Oh, he's a Hare Krishna now. Or, oh, she went to Hare Krishna. So it's very good. They're saying Hare Krishna. They're thinking of Krishna. Even though they may not be devotees themselves, but if they just say Hare Krishna, oh, he's gone to Hare Krishna. Oh, he went to or they went to Hare Krishna, very good, very nice. And one who has taken shelter of Krishna consciousness, then they are free from all their debts. They are no longer de in debt to the family. We would, people say, you know, you are indebted to your mother and father, they gave birth to you, they brought you up, they dedicated so much time and energy to care for you. But if you have surrendered to Krishna and taken shelter of Krishna, then you're free from all these debts. You're no longer indebted to any of them because you have taken shelter of Lord Krishna. And that example is very powerful, it's very important. We have to show people the example to renounce and to detach from the material world. The example speaks louder than words. We may talk about these things, but we have to show it by our own example. If you simply stay with your mother and father, you simply stay with your family members, are you going to save them from death? They're still going to die. They're still going to get old, they're going to get disease and they're going to give up their body. You're not going to be able to help them if you just simply stay with them. They're still going to suffer the miseries of the material world. What we need to do, we can help, help the family members by dedicating our life to devotional service, by showing them the example of surrendering to Krishna and taking up Krishna consciousness. 
So Srila Prabhupada talks about the Goswamis and how they showed the example. They were very rich people. They were from very high class aristocracy. They were all educated in many languages and they were very rich and some of them had big positions in the government. But they gave it all up to become Krishna to become fully engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. So, were they foolish? No, they were the wisest people. The foolish people are the ones who stay in the well, right? The family life, the life of the family, that is like a well, a dark well. You cannot get out. There's always so many problems and issues in the family life. You stay at home, you stay with the family, then it will be always time so many politics and arguments, and quarrels, so many issues will be there. So Queen Kunti She's praying to Krishna because she knows Krishna is very powerful. So she describes him, Lord of the universe, right? We were doing Jagannath Rathiyatra. Jagannath is also Lord of the universe, soul of the universe, personality of the form of the universe. She's praying to Krishna, Lord Krishna is a person and she's praying to him, please take away that attachment which I have for my family members. Lord Chaitanya, while he was still a young man, 24 years of age, he renounced the world. He gave up a very nice, beautiful, loving wife who spoke very nicely but he left her and he left his mother and his mother was very nice also. She was always serving him and cooking beautiful food for him and she loved him so much. But Lord Chaitanya left both of them to go to take up the mission of distributing Krishna consciousness all over the world. If you just simply stay at home, then there will always be so many things in the home and you'll never get out of the home to go and help and serve the world. We have to do service for on the broader level, on the whole for the whole world, not just for our own little family affairs just only be concerned for the family, that, that will not be good for our Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada said, sometimes Krishna arranges, he breaks the, the relationship. Just like Prabhupada experienced in his own life, that the family were no longer nice to him. The family were no longer respectful. So he saw it's time to go home, time to leave the home. The, when his business failed and there was no money, then the, the family members were no longer very nice and caring for him. So he understood this is Krishna's arrangement, time to leave the home. And he left the home and he got a bigger family. You give up one little family to get a bigger family, to get a home all over the world. Just like we come to Kuchin, we have a home here in the temple, right? We don't have a really, we may not have any relatives here in Kuchin, but we have our 
devotee relatives, our spiritual family is here and our spiritual home is here. And so like that we have homes all over the world by the grace of the Krishna consciousness movement. So you may give up one little home with your family member, but you've got a bigger home, homes all over the world. And the, at home, you go at home, everybody will complain and argue and quarrel with each other. But when you're with the devotees, it's much more kind and loving and caring. It's a different mood. So it's so much better to be in Krishna consciousness than simply to be lost in the family consciousness. We're not saying be neglectful of the family, but we're warning that we have to be careful about being too much attached, too much affectionate for the family. That is, the mate that is not spiritual. There are two kinds of ashram. There's Grehasta and there is Grehamedi. Grehasta is a spiritual ashram. In the spiritual ashram, men and women may live together for the sake of spiritual advancement. But Grehamedi life is where men and women live together simply for sense gratification, simply to satisfy their own senses. So in this way people miss what is the real goal of human life. So we want to encourage people to awaken their Krishna consciousness, to come out of the bodily concept of life. We're always preaching, I'm not the body, I'm a soul, we're all spirit souls. We have to act as a spirit soul. We can't just simply act, we say one thing and do another. We say, I'm a spirit soul and we're very attached to the family, our own family. And all of our money and all of our time is going for the fam our own little family. So Srila Prabhupada said even these people who go to Vrindavan, they go to the Holy Land, they give all their money to their family and then they go to Vrindavan. He said, that's not very good. That's not how it should be. All right, you give some portion of your money to the family. Rupa Goswami di di divided his money in a very exemplary manner. He gave 50% for the service of the Vaishnavas. He gave 25% for the family and he kept 25% for emergency. And so that, this is a good example. 50% should go for the service of Krishna. 25% you can keep for your own emergencies and 25% you give to family. Don't give everything to the family. That's what people, materialistic people do. They give everything for their own family. And then they go off to Vrindavan. And they think, I'm so renounced, I've come to Vrindavan. But they gave all their money to their family. It's not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to see the greater family, the big vision. See everyone as a brother and sister, everyone as our family members. We're all one family. Srila Prabhupada is our spiritual father and we have our spiritual forefathers, the parampara. And we're all coming from Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham bija prada pita. I am the seed giving father. Lord Krishna is the father of all living entities. So all of the all of us, we are all brothers and sisters. In the nationalistic society, they teach all oh, your countrymen are your brothers and sisters. 
but we, th we speak on a universal level. The whole universe, we're all brothers and sisters. Not just people in one country are brothers. See everyone, the broader vision. See all living entities, not just humans. The animals also, the plants, the trees, they're all brothers and sisters. We're all one family and our business is for the service of the family, for the service of the world, to please Lord Krishna. So one who goes out from the home, the family members may say, oh, he's a traitor, he left us, he went away and left his poor mother, he left his poor wife, whatever. They may say, they may say like that. But if they have gone for the purpose of devotional service to take up the greater work, then there's no harm. Rather, it's for the benefit of the world. And certainly the person who's done that is very glorious. The, in the Vedic culture, life is divided. We divide the life. The young men get trained as student life. Then they get married and they're in family life for some time. And then they retire from family life. Retired family life means cultivating more, the, all their time is spent in spiritual practice. Vanaprasa, husband and wife are still together, but their purpose is spiritual practice. And then finally, there may even be renunciation. That the, the husband may tell the wife, now you stay with the family, you go back to the family, you be with your son, whatever. And the fa husband will go off and take sannyas and just travel and preach Krishna consciousness. So that is the final stage of life, the renunciation. Of course, not everyone will take sannyas, but retired life is there. Everyone should retire. And the retirement should be, we should plan half the life. The Vedas say, Pancha Sorvam Vanam Brajit. From the age of 50, you have to retire. Already you're 50 years old, right? You have to retire. You have to prepare for the next life. And how to prepare for the next life? You go to temple, you take up devotional service and you become involved in Krishna consciousness fully, dedicating your time and energy for Krishna's service. And this is for the women as well as the men. They have to do this also. Women shouldn't just sit at home. They should also get detached from the family. If you just simply sit and play with the children and then the grandchildren and like that, oh, you spend your whole life just looking after children. That is not very good for the consciousness. So we want to understand how to make proper use of human life. So Queen Kunti is teaching us, take away my affection for my family members. So if she's praying like that, her family members are so great, they're so glorious, but still she's, she's worried, I don't want to be too much attached to them. So we should also be careful not to be too much attached to the family members. Okay, any questions? Any comments? Tongima.
Everybody agree, yeah? No comment. Very hard. Why? What's difficult? You're attached to your children, huh? Now already not so attached. This why I travel with Guru Maharaj. <laughs> 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 but sometimes still miss them, like, but they do it at home, they okay, but they really can't take care of the house or something like that. Yeah, because you have some property, you have a house, and you're thinking, my house, you know, my home. That attachment is there, attached to the family and the family possessions, like the house which you live in. You're thinking, it's my home. So, that's why you have to get out of the house more, so that you don't, be, you don't have so much attachment for the property, because that house is also temporary. You can't take it with you. When you leave the body, you cannot take that house with you. No, I got no more house, no more name there. Already give. You already give what? House. Who to? Children. Who did you give it to? To my children. Ah, oh, see, you gave everything to your children. <laughs> I can't go my house now. Huh? <laughs> temple. Where? What did you give to the temple? Service. Service. <laughs> he didn't give any money. <laughs> gave all the money to your children. No, no, I still need to keep money for spiritual. Keep money for your spiritual. Yeah, but. Remember, I said half have to go, half has to go to the, do, the the service of the devotees and the Vaishnavas, the Brahmanas. Twenty five percent you can keep for your spiritual, and twenty five percent for your children. No, no, I'm not taking money to my children. I still keep my money. My children they can earn their money themselves. Okay. But what about the house? Do you give the house to your children? Until I die. I can uh, stay in the house until I die. You can stay in the house so long as you're alive. Yes. Right. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. But but that prop you're attached to that house. No more, no more attached. I just clean my house, take care of my house. A Krishna house I I think it like this a Krishna house. Thank you, Krishna give me the house. To live there until I leave my body. Hmm. Yeah, but you have a lot, naturally you have attachment to that house. <laughs> <laughs> when you go back, you say, oh no, what have you done? You, you didn't clean this or you didn't. Uh, no, no, not very. <laughs> <laughs> but you should clean our house, or then only Pakti can come with anything. You should have the children buy you a house in Vrindavan or Mayapur. Okay, okay, I go back and my children. <laughs> you tell them, you want to go and live in Mayapur and you should buy me a house there. Okay, okay, come on. <laughs> That would be good for them. And you tell them later on when you get old, they can also come and live in the house. Nearby Todu, Maharaj. Nearby Todu. Nearby Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, you have a, gave a very good uh, answer. You see, like now the uh, time is so difficult for the children, and then uh, we say we give the house uh, to the temple and all that. But the children are also struggling even to get a house. Now things are so expensive. 
for them to own a house, uh, both the husband and the wife, you know, if they're working, both have to work to, to get a house. You know, it's so difficult at times. So if we think, oh, we want to give everything to the temple, but the children is struggling, and then they don't see anything positive in, in the Krishna consciousness. You know, I mean, that's how I look at it. So I was also thinking that I must give something to the children so that they feel that they can also take care of their needs. So if you give everything to the temple, they said, the parents also doesn't take care of us. <laughs> you know, they, they think like that, you know, the children, because then the, we can't even make ends meet because now it's so difficult, times are not like uh, those days, interest rates are so high and they can't cope with uh, even the material life. So what is your thought about this? Oh. Well, my thoughts are that, first of all, how much you help the children. You, you, you help them a bit, but you don't have to help them completely. You don't have to do everything for them. You know, you give some help to them, but you also give something for Krishna. Right? You don't give everything for them, for the children. Yeah, times are difficult, times are difficult for everyone. It's, 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 it's not just only your children or my children, ch they're our children, but it's difficult for everyone. So it's the same situation for everyone. The interest rates are higher, yeah, okay, you give them, so you, you, you give some house for them. But you don't have to give everything for them. You don't want to make it too easy for them. Because then they just come sit back and think, Oh, my mother and father didn't do it. <laughs> you know, if, we make it, if you make it too easy for them, they, they have to learn to stand on their own feet. You know, look after themselves. You know, you had to do it. You had to work hard and stand on your own feet. It wasn't so easy when you were young also. Did your mother and father give you a house? Yes. yes. They gave you a house? Yes. <laughs> but I do, I do set aside money for... So that house is there. So you give that house to them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to buy a new house for the children, right? Yes. You've already got one house which, which your mother and father gave you. So that passes on to the children, all right. But, you know, you're supposed to expand, you know, what your mother and father gave, you're supposed to have more and you're supposed to add on to it in the course of your own uh, time as a grihasta. When you're earning and making money, you sh you're supposed to expand a bit, you know. You have one house, your mother and father left you a house, so you can make the house bigger or you have another house, so you have a bit more. So you leave one house behind and one house you, you can give to Krishna. Very good idea. <laughs> Maharaj, I do, I do set aside uh, part of my uh, whatever I have for Krishna. Well, I'm sure you do. I know you're a very thoughtful devotee. I'm sure you give something. So, I'm, uh, I'm just appreciating that it's certainly difficult, but sometimes, you know, no matter how much you do for the children, sometimes it's never enough. The, you know, they want more and more, and and they want to make they what they expect. You should make it so easy for them, and they they don't want to do anything. And so it can be like that. You, you don't want to make it too easy for them. They have to they have to have some kind of make some efforts on their own, and they should grow also. Continue to grow, develop. Times are hard. Times have always been hard. It's always been the material world. In some ways you could say that things are a lot easier now than what they were before. There's so many more houses 
In the past there were not so many, now there's so many more building houses everywhere. So houses are available. No, we, the, the, the point is we, we don't want to be too much caught up in the responsibilities to the children. What is your real duty as a father? Is to deliver them from birth and death. Try to give them Krishna consciousness. And so if they don't, if they if they're not interested in Krishna consciousness, they don't take it very seriously. Then what can we do? We you know we tried. You did your duty. You know, leave them to it. They don't want to be devotees. They just want to live the material life, let them go ahead, live their material life. It's not your responsibility to provide for them, for their material life. Your responsibility is over. After 50, you retire. Your responsibilities are over. Your responsibility then is actually then its responsibility is to surrender to Krishna and to take up Krishna consciousness full time and let the children take care of their self. They'll be standing on their own feet by then. Yes. You, you have, you have to, we have to save ourselves before, you know, if you have to think about your own self. You, you want to come back in the family again. You want to come back in the same family. You may come back not necessarily as a human being, you may come back as a family dog. Or you may come back in the family as some, you know, servant or something in the family. You have to be careful. Family attachment can bring us back into that same condition. Prabhupada tells the story, there was this one man, he was very attached to his family. So when he died, next life he became the cobbler, repairing the shoes of the family. And the children, the, the people who were his children in his last life, they came and they got the shoes and they beat the man with the shoes. They were his children, but he became a cobbler and they, the children, his children came with their shoes and they were beating him. And so, so difficult, you have to be very careful not to get caught in the family attachment. Bharat Maharaj became attached to the deer. And he had to become an animal in his next life. So we want to cultivate Krishna consciousness, to develop the attachment for Krishna. That can save us from taking an animal body, taking birth again. You have a big factory, next life you may become a rat in the factory. So we definitely want to be very thoughtful about the future. Where do we want to go in the next life, right? Where we should be thinking. You want to come back again? Oh, Malaysia, come back in Malaysia. But you may come back as a tree. There's so many trees in Malaysia. And so we want to be very thoughtful about giving, about this, making proper use of this life. We have to get detachment, we have to let go of the affection for all of these things. And the way to do it, yes, you have a question, Nitai Priya? Babu just made a comment about 
how his house even has a lot of uh, ghosts who would not leave the house oh. in a subtle form. <laughs> yes, it, and also in my house due to the my mother's attachment to my brother, and my mother always says brother is around. What happened? Your brother died. Yes, so he, she thinks he's around. Oh. So that's the attachment. Yeah. So how to get detached? We have to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Just by practicing Krishna consciousness, we get detached, we forget about all our affairs. The more we're busy in Krishna consciousness, the less we have time to think about the material energy. So we want to keep ourselves always active, just like putting on the Rati Atra, the devotees were very busy doing so many things, making so many arrangements. So all of these different programs are good to keep us away from the material energy, to help us get free. So we're coming up, Balarama Purnima is coming, and then Krishna Janmastami, then Radhastami, and then after that, then will be Damodar, will be month of Kartik. So we've, we have so many activities, so many things to keep ourselves busy every day. We want to keep ourselves always in Krishna consciousness, not in the family consciousness, in Krishna consciousness. The big family, Krishna's family. Okay? Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Premanandi. Gaur back to Brenda ki.